What's going on? It's your boy, Mr. I don't know how to do YouTube intros. And today I'm gonna start a new, is it a series on this channel? It's not really a series. It's more of a format. It's more of a kind of, it's more of an idea. It's more of a concept. Is it even a concept? Is it more of a bi-monthly snack assortment basket? I'm not really sure. I think it's probably a video. I've established myself uh, for better or for worse as some sort of authority on nuzlocking. So there's quite a few um, questions that I get pretty frequently uh, in my DMs, in my ats, in my mentions, in my Discord, and of course in my Twitch chat and YouTube comments. And I thought we could go over questions a little bit and, you know, kind of talk about them so the answers are out there, you know what I mean? Oh, thanks for the reminder to turn off my stream You're a bi-monthly snack. Thanks, I appreciate that. I'm not gonna restart, guys. That was, that was a really good intro. All right. Uh, oh wait, I didn't even mention what we're talking about yet. So we're gonna be talking about the best Pokemon games to start your Nuzlocke journey, because that's a question that I get quite often. What is the best game? What, hey PC, I'm, I wanna start Nuzlocke, and what game should I start with? You know what? Let's go over them. So let's let's just kind of go over the games and we'll talk about it. So I'm, I'm going to start out with some pretty generalizing um, statements about these games and whether or not I recommend them. And that at the end of the video, so stay tuned, keep up that watch time statistic for me. At the end, I'm going to tell you where to start out with if you like have absolutely no idea or if you're still a little bit confused. Like the, the I, I'll give you the most general advice possible that's guaranteed going to work for you. All right. All right, here we go. These are sorted alphabetically. I'm just gonna go through them chronologically real quick. I, I don't think the Gen 1 games are very suitable. I think they're just really old. If you're nostalgia tripping super hard, you can do these. I just think the like super limited move sets, the super limited like encounters, uh, the fact that it's Gen 1 and all the mechanics are super wonky. I don't think these games are very fun to play anymore. They're just really old. You can, they're, if you're like super nostalgia tripping on them, if you're like 40 years old. Damn, Twitch chat straight up spitting on YouTube frogs. You guys are getting annihilated right now. Are you guys gonna respond to that at all? They're not particularly hard or anything. It's just like they're, I don't think they're very fun to play anymore and they don't teach you like very good mechanics, I think, because they're so unique too. I don't think they teach you like good game knowledge at all because they're so different. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend those. I think Gold, Silver, Crystal can be fun-ish. Uh, I, I'm, I personally hate Gen 2 and anything associated with Johto. Um, and I also think that these games, especially in the Gen 2 format, are like really slow. So I'm not gonna recommend them either. I think I, I would like, if, if you do like Johto, I think the remakes are so much better. Again, the, the game mechanics aren't as fleshed out yet. They're very old. Um, very slow. If you're super nostalgic for them and everything, you could, but there's also the remakes, right? I, so, not not, not, not a big recommendation for me um, on these either. Uh, for, for Gen 3, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. Uh, I, I think these are super playable. Um, I think these are super fun, especially Emerald, although I think the difference is not that big at all. If you're nostalgic for these games at all, if you like them, um, Gen 3 is all like the has like proper move sets for Pokemon. It's got a lot more moves in general. It's got a lot more Pokemon. It's got uh, more items and everything. It's just a little bit more, you know, fleshed out, but still old school. So if you're craving that like old school Pokemon itch to scratch, I would definitely recommend these. Play. They're they're on the harder side for sure to Nuzlocke. Um, but if you're if you are craving older games, I would recommend these. Now I'm gonna give you my highest recommendation. Or one of my highest recommendations, though, for Fire Red and Leaf Green. Um, I think if you have absolutely no idea where to start, and you're super new to Pokemon, or you're like you haven't played it in a really, really long time, these games are a really good place to start. Um, they're much more modern, even though they're like about as old as like Gen One at this point. Like the difference is not that big anymore. But but these games are so nice to start out with um, because they have that like 
first Pokemon game, everything's like presented to you in a pretty slow and steady way. Um, it's got a decent difficulty curve. It's got a good a variety of Pokemon. It's, it's more more importantly though, compared to Gen One, the move sets are like so much more diverse and more interesting. The mechanics are much more fleshed out and everything, and they're actually like functioning games. It's just it's it's just like Gen One, but everything is like better. It's like a really good place to start because they are pretty easy and doable, but they have like a difficulty curve and everything. The encounters are decently like variable, and there's a lot of good Pokemon to pick up along the way. They're like static encounters, like your Snorlaxes and your starter and your EVs and your Hitmons and your Laprases and everything like that. So I would highly recommend these as your first Nuzlocke game. I think that's really good. If you if you do choose these as your first games and you're looking for more kind of tips and tricks to kind of flesh out your journey through Fire Red Leaf Green, I highly recommend you check out a collaboration video I did with Mystic Umbreon on his channel. that will be linked up there somewhere, I don't know, or in the description or something. That's something for you to check out. Uh, go click that and uh, go check out the recommendations for the best team to get in these games. Moving on, Diamond, Pearl, Platinum. These are very playable. They're a little bit slow because they're Gen 4. Um, the early game of these games plays very slowly. Actually, I actually tend to not recommend these as your first games. Chat's gonna hate me for this. I actually don't think these are good games to start out on. I, I think they're good games. I think they're fun. And I think if you're super nostalgic for specifically Gen 4, it's probably fine. Platinum is a little bit faster, I guess. But they, the start of these games and with everything on how it works on the DS is pretty slow. Um, and if you do die like early, uh, which is going to happen because they're kind of hard, you're going to have to do all of that over again. And the whole early game of these games, it's just, it's going to be a frustrating experience for you to do that over and over and over again. Especially because the games are also quite difficult. I think they're good for like... If you're a little bit more experienced, I think these are fantastic games. It's just as your first Nuzlocke experience, I think I would I would recommend to just go to a different game instead, in my opinion. Although you could always play on emulator and speed up, which is what I I, I would recommend that anyway. But yeah, I can I can recommend Heart Gold Soul Silver if you're nostalgic for Gen Two, if you're nostalgic for Johto. Um, play these instead of the actual Gen 2. They're so much better. Like, there's so much more. The Pokemon that you get are so much more diverse. They're so pretty. They're so beautiful. There's a lot going on. A lot of really cool mechanics. It's got the physical specials, but in everything, a lot more Pokemon are viable. They're really, really fun to play. Um, I'm not a big fan of Gen 2 personally. I just have some issues with it. But if you are nostalgic for this game, it's a pretty good. It's a. The only thing about Heart Gold Soul Silver that I would say is. I, I don't like fully recommend them if you're not super nostalgic for them, mainly because the end game is, especially if you play on cartridge instead of emulator, the late game is horrendous for grinding. If you're going all the way to red, it's a very long game. You're doing 16 badges and grinding is so slow. That's why I'm not going to highly recommend these. It's just like if you're, I, I know a lot of people are nostalgic spe specifically for this phase of Pokemon. So if you do want to go back to that, I think it's a decent place to go instead of um, Gen, instead of the actual Gen 2 games, just be wary that like, if, if, if you're feeling that, you probably want to be playing on an emulator because on cartridge later on in the game, grinding becomes impossible and the game will be impossible to actually finish. I think black and white one, I think everything Gen 5 is pretty recommendable. I, I really like these games. They're my favorite games in the series, black and white, especially black and white 2. They're a little bit on the hard side, especially black and white 2. I think black and white 1 are still pretty playable. I think the only thing is like a lot of people still look for like that kind of nostalgia factor in these games and you're not going to find them in these in my opinion. If you're a little bit more of a tech savvy person though and you're more looking for like maybe you want to do a randomizer, you're playing on emulator, you know, especially with like a randomizer or something, this is a really, these games are a pretty cool place to start because there's so many different Pokemon available. It's probably not going to scratch your nostalgia itch that much because there's just not that many Pokemon there. It's just like a very like mechanically fleshed out game. It feels really good. It's very snappy, very fast. Um, I, re I really, really like the Gen 5 games. And if you're looking at something pre 3DS era, this is the most modern thing that you're going to get, which is nice. I don't recommend Black and White 2 as much. Everything I, that I said about Black and White 1 goes for these games, except there's a few more other Pokemon available. But they're, they're pretty difficult. Um, these games are pretty hard. Uh, but but again, they're 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 pretty fast. They're pretty snappy. They're very modern and uh, don't have that 3DS feel yet. They're still very 2D, very Pokemon, you know. So if if you do have like some sort of connection with these games, um, I think Black and White One is a pretty good place to start. And I was liking, it's pretty challenging, but it's it's 
there it's a it's a pretty fair game i would say i think i'm gonna get from chat for this but i think x and y are fantastic games to start nuzlocking if you're not bothered by the whole 3DS aesthetic, X and Y has a huge like variety of Pokemon to get, which is really cool. Um, they start out a little bit slow, but um, they're not they're not super difficult, uh, and I think they show you the ropes really well and have like all the like modern mechanics too. They're pretty easy, and that's why I think they're a pretty good place to start. Um, they still challenge you at some points, in my opinion, and I just think like and especially like. The, the XP all as well for new players, I think is a really good thing because it much more easily allows you to integrate Pokemon onto your team rather than having to like grind up everything individually. And then you like get a level two Pokemon and you never, never actually grind it. So I think the XP all too is like a really, really good thing to have. I think X and Y are good games. If you're looking for a more modern Pokemon experience and less like retro or 2D or whatever, I think X and Y are a good place to start. I'm gonna put Auras up here as well. Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. If you're if you're nostalgic for the Gen 3 games, but you're looking for something more modern and a little bit more easy too than those games, um, these can be pretty good. One thing for the, to say for the 3DS games is that the the emulator for them, Citra, is a little bit harder to run and can be a little bit more tricky to get to work. But if you're looking like for the on console experience, I think these games are totally fine. I think both Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon are too difficult. I think these are actually really fun games to Nuzlocke. I just think they're too difficult. Unless you're kind of looking for, for that kind of challenge, I think that could be cool. I might put Sun and Moon even up here. I think Ultra Sun and Moon are like very hard to recommend. I really like Gen 7, but especially Ultra Sun and Moon, I think are legitimately like not a good like difficulty point to start. Um, Sun and Moon, maybe. Um, I think Sun and Moon has an interesting challenge aspect to it. Um, if, if you like the aesthetic, if you like the, uh, the, the type of gameplay that Sun and Moon provides, you could do it. It's also kind of tedious to start these games over when you start a new attempt because there's so many cutscenes. That's another thing to, uh, to consider. I think Let's Go lends itself terribly to nuzlocking because of the way the mechanics are set up in that game. Um, encountering Pokemon is weird. The, the way that you need to complete your Pokedex to fight Koga and everything makes it super awkward. The way that the catching mechanics and everything in that game works, it's just the Nuzlocke challenge was not made for these games. And I, I, I don't think they're, they're, they're good games for, for that. Um, if, if you're looking for the Kanto experience, I would recommend to just go play Fire Red and Leaf Green instead. I don't even consider these mainline Pokemon games, to be honest. Um, I know most people do, but it also removes a lot of mechanics. Like, there's no abilities in this game. I don't know what the f is up with that. These are probably the worst games, to be honest, to, to start Nuzlocke with, just because they're so weird. And then I don't recommend Sword and Shield either, to be honest. I personally really didn't like them. Um, I think the wild area makes everything a little bit complicated. The the difficulty curve, it's 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 pretty strange. Gigantamax and Dino... I think they're also very easy but not like in a, in a in a fun like learning experience way i guess if you only have a switch and that's the only console that you're playing on i guess i would recommend these over let's go <laughs> so i'm gonna put them here they're, they're they're at least like a core experience i would say the only thing that's weird about it is the wild area although you there's ways to play around that the way i usually do in the wild area is like each area is basically considered one route and then usually I just like blindfold myself and go in, but you can do that however you like. So that would be like the general ranking, but I will give you the number one piece of advice for starting Nuzlocke's. Um, this entire tier list doesn't actually matter that much. These are just like very general recommendations. The best game for you to start Nuzlocking on is your favorite Pokemon game because that's the one that you've played the most because that's the one that you have the most game knowledge of. That's the one that's going to be the most fun for you because you know the most about it. Because game knowledge is everything in Nuzlocke's. So if you have uh, a lot of knowledge about a game, then I recommend that you play that one. Because you're gonna have the most fun of it because it's your favorite game. Honestly, the differences between these is not that big. Just jump in, make some experience, learn the game itself, complete it, and then move on. I think that's, that's the best that you can do. If it's a game that you truly love, then you're probably gonna have fun with it. The difference, even if it's Let's Go or Ultra Sun and Moon or whatever. Check out um, Mystic Umbreon's collab video with me to this video. Uh, it's linked in the description. Oh, I actually have a call to action. Uh, because we're doing this frequently asked Nuzlocke or questions kind of thing that I where I wanna like answer all the questions that you guys always have for me. What is, a, what is something that you would wanna see a video done on? Like what's a question that you think is like a big one that you would want to see me answer? For you new Nuzlockers out there trying to learn the ropes, what's something that you would like to see? Leave a comment about that and make sure to subscribe you see when that video goes live and uh, ring the bell. Like? Is that a thing still? I think, right?
Yeah, leave a like. Okay, cool. End card. See you later. Bye. You didn't advertise the new Clips channel? Oh, sh true. Uh, I don't know if the editor is going to get this part, uh, but if you do, hey, the, we, have a, uh, we have a new Peachal Daily Highlight Clips channel that you should go subscribe to. We're posting daily highlight clips from the stream there. Okay, bye. Ba da 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 da